Hey everybody, it's Brian, and this is our 31st Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Um, we're going to tie everything we've learned together into a working GUI application. So let's go File, New, and we're going to say uh, Projects GUI Application, and call it uh, My GUI Thread. Let's just say E-Test, and let's give it a Q dialog. I'm going to have to go through this fairly quickly. Um, a lot of this is going to be review here. So just if you see me whipping through this and you have no idea what I'm doing, I beg you, please go watch the other tutorials. And we're just going to throw a couple push buttons on here. We'll call this start and we'll call this stop. And let's actually set our layout for this form here. And let's put a spacer in here. And the basic premise here, help if I can spell number, the basic premise of this application is when we run it, um, we're going to have a thread that increments a number right here, and we're going to have the ability to start and stop the thread. So let's do that. Now let's jump right into the code. Add new, you guessed it, C++ class. And we'll say my thread base class is going to be QThread. Um, in the past I've told you not to do that, but I'm actually going to tell you to do it this time. Uh, the reason why is you get a lot of things for free. And here they are. You automatically get the inherited QThread with the Q object. You get the signals and slots. So in order for this class to talk with our GUI, we need to emit a signal. I don't think we've ever done a signal, but they're very easy. You just need the signals directive and then you just say void and let's call this uh, number changed and that's it that's all it takes to make a signal and we're going to make the run function override that and we're going to make a boolean value called stop that's what we're going to use to stop our thread now let's jump into the thread implementation here and say void run. Oops, totally forgot our namespace there. Let's just copy it for the sake of speed. And let's do an include here. And you guessed it, we are going to just simply do a for loop. And I going to make a mutex here. That way we can avoid any embarrassing crashes. Um, nothing's really changed, so if this stop. This should all look very familiar to you. Break. Otherwise, we are going to do what is called an emit. Emit is how a signal is emitted or sent from the object that other objects can put into a slot or absorb. So we're going to emit the, you guessed it, number changed. Now, in itself, number changed doesn't do us a whole lot of good because we need to take this i, this variable, and emit it through that slot. So let's actually jump in here and add a parameter or an argument of integer. So we're going to emit number changed with an integer. Jump back into our thread here and now we can just put i. Now if there are no slots to absorb the signal, no problem. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to crash. The signal will still get emitted, but nothing happens. All right, now let's go into our dialog here. And this is where the magic is going to happen. Let's go include. Let me fix that real quick. Sorry about that. My thread. And we are going to make my thread. I'm going to make a pointer. And we want to. Um, actually make a public 
slots. Uh, number changed. And we're going to give it an int. That way we can absorb that signal as it's emitted. Now jump into dialog CPP and you notice how it's just a bare bones basic dialog here. So the first thing we need to do is void dialog. We need to implement our slot. Because that is after all the whole point of this program. So let's say UI label set text. All of this so far should be very familiar and nothing but pure review. Uh, Q string. If you're having problems keeping up with what I'm doing, um, I'd recommend you go back and watch some of the other tutorials because we have covered all of this so far. Alright, so that is how we are displaying the number. Let's kind of review real quick here. As the thread is run, it's going to loop 10,000 times and it's going to emit this number changed. And we are using a slot to absorb that signal and when it's triggered we are just simply putting that number out there. Now we haven't run this thread yet so we need to do that. Let's actually go into our dialog, start, go to slot, clicked. Let's go back in here and do the stop button also. Go to slot, clicked. That way we have on push button, on push button 2. Let's say started. Comments are always nice. I know I haven't been doing them very much in this tutorial. So we have started and stopped. Now, first thing we need to do is actually create the thread. So I'll say mthread equal new my thread. And we're going to make this the parent. That way, when this form's closed, the thread's also deleted out of memory. And we want to connect that signal and slot. So we'll say connect mthread signal. You guessed it. Number changed with an int. The slot's going to be this. I'm sorry, the receiver is going to be this. The slot, however, is going to be on number changed. That's the slot we just created with our integer parameter. And then we will jump down. When the started button is clicked, we're going to start the thread with the normal priority. And when the stop button's click, we're going to actually set that stop flag remember we put that Q mutex in there so that if it's in the middle of that loop reading that variable and we're setting the flag it's not going to explode and blow up in a fiery death here uh oh forbids on number change with no type what did we do wrong here oh yes we forgot void very sorry about that so go ahead and build your program and Fingers crossed. There we go. When we click the start button, notice how it counted up. Now it counted so fast we didn't have a chance to even test the stop button. Well that's what I was talking about in a previous tutorial when I said we had to use sleep. This, and we could say sleep, which you have an unsigned long, and I believe that's every second, but we want to do milliseconds. So we'll say MS sleep, or millisecond sleep. And let's give it a number like, um, I don't know, 100 milliseconds. Nice even number. We can still see what's going on here. Now when we click start, you see how it's counting. And it's counting fairly quickly. And you can click stop, and the thread stops. That, in a nutshell, is how you make a thread with GUI programming. Now you notice, if you're familiar with other languages like Visual Basic, C Sharp, and I believe Java, we didn't have to do any proxy or delegate classes. That's a real pain in the butt with some of these other programming languages is you have to make a separate class to interface with your thread class to interface with the GUI. Qt doesn't have any of that nonsense whatsoever. You just use the standard signal slot mechanism which you've grown to love and learn. Alright, this is Brian. I'm running out of time. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching.